in this week's video our windlass finally gives up the ghost and luckily we have a spare motor that Cindy brought back from the UK and we're able to repair it but we have to do the repair while we're anchored luckily we have all the kit on board <coughs> oh that's a bit different <laughs> Obviously it goes without saying, before you go poking around, you need to remove the fuse for this circuit. Well for the third time in nine years, our windlass motor has uh, failed. Well it has actually failed, it's still working, but what's happening is the brushes are getting stuck, not touching the armature properly. So this is our windlass type. It's a Lumar Fish Pro or Fisher Pro. 1000 watts does the job, but to be honest, I think we could probably do with a bigger one. So what we think is happening is that the brushes aren't contacting the armature correctly. This is making the windlass motor weak. The brushes transfer the electricity from the 12 volt circuit into the motor and make it rotate. If you want to know more about this, have a look at our Boat Electrical Made Easy series where we talk about electric motors and how they work. Boat Electrical Made Easy playlist is in the video description. And so, uh, to take out the front panel in the forward cabin, and these are the two, this is the relay, this is the remote control for the relay because we have a remote control and a wired control and then it's held down with these two bolts here at the back these are mate. we've got a spare motor and to be fair the, the motor we had last time was one from eBay I don't know how good it was, but it said it was genuine. And then after about three years, the bolts came off. The uh, not the bolts came off. The uh, gear started coming off of the drive shaft where the pin was worn. A little pin that holds it on. I'll show you that in a minute. Actually, when we get this off. And this one has these two bolts here and then another one outside so we've had to wait until the wind has died down he said with the wind howling outside and um, take the windlass off change the motor out that's a pretty quick job it's just awkward and I've cut my finger and of course I'm bleeding everywhere right, so that's those two now I've got to go outside do the other one which is the other side of this uh, crash bulkhead it's a big space down here only looks like it's eight inches or so, but down below it's huge. I could have made the chain locker twice the size, and that's a water tank in there. Right, let's go and do the one outside. There's a third bolt under here. 
covered in left kess mud under the front there which I've just undone I'm gonna put a piece of line on here first through here so that I can lift it up and there's no danger of me dropping anything because it would be in trouble Luckily, I've got this piece of quiet fingers bleeding. The only problem with being on warfarin. I've taken that off of there, and that is where the bitter end also to the bitter end. So this is the spanner that we can free fall the anchor with. What I'm going to do is drop this line down the back of there with a bit of luck. that was part of I'm gonna to have to do it out on the deck here because that hole the chain actually goes down through that hole I've got a knot on there I'll tie this up here oh, I'm bleeding I'm a bleeding nuisance Okay, so that'll stop that chain running away. I've got blood on that now. Go and get a plaster. Nah. Let me go and get your plaster. No. Stop moaning about it. It's not going to work. It, it won't work. out of there that shaft looks hmm some damage that shaft anyway let's get this out Come on, cable. Yes. I've got a feeling you had to cut the ends off. Yeah. Last one. Redo them. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Grab the pliers and cut the ends off. We always keep the bit of gasket paper on board for just such an occasion that's the old gasket there I just want to make sure I get everything in the right place here's a new bit now the only one thing is we've got this stud here that won't come out and I have given it a good go so what we're going to have to do is just mark that like that cut a small hole in there And I'll keep some scalpels on board for just this kind of surgery. Make a new gasket. 
and we make that little hole and then we place that over the top I'm making the hole just a bit bigger so that I've got room to maneuver it about I think we'll put some new grease in here this old stuff I can't change it all because we'd need to wash it all out in diesel but I can add some new stuff for now so right that will go over there like that and turn that that way over you see with that hole being just a tad big I can move it around so So this is oil resistant gasket paper, proper gasket paper. We'll put the holes in in a minute. Let's get that off of there. And now all I have to do is cut this out. It hasn't got to be super accurate because it sticks out a little bit anyway. Look at that, I could have been a surgeon, I could have done my own heart up, darling. <laughs> okay. There we are, back again. You have to use a unicorn pen and it has to be... It's a pig. It's a unicorn, it's look. A pig and you've broken whole... its ear. No, it's not an ear. That's it's, that's where oh, it's... Oh, it had a... It had a thingy bob. Well, I know a unicorn when I've seen them. I've seen a few. Green alligators and long neck geese. Humpy back camels and chimpanzees. You won't remember that. It was a song. But there wasn't oh, one... I've never recognised it. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. there and one there you can just cut them out I could get the punches out but they're under the bed that's our gasket and it fits on there all the holes line up Hopefully, he said. Yes. And now, I've just got to mark roughly where the edges of those castings come. We're doing this in the workshop, which we're not. We put this on a ink pad and then just transfer it over. But we are on anchor doing running repairs, and we've got to work with what we've got, and we can't afford to make a mistake because we won't get the anchor up. So now I have that imprint roughly on there. It's a bit bigger, but that's where these bearings and stuff go through. And now oh, I could do with here's one I prepared earlier, couldn't I? It's going to be dark in 20 minutes. Mm. Uh, I know somebody's going to go, oh, you rushed that. You could have done a much better job than that. I have 20 minutes to get this on while we have daylight. Get us back in the action. 
Okay. And funnily enough, amongst all this lot, there's another one of them <laughs> already cut out from last time. We keep them bits because we can still make gaskets. So, there we go. That's our gasket, that's how it's going to fit on. Just need to get some grease out the locker, put a bit of new grease on, get this buttoned up, get it back on again. cylinder head gas it's all seated properly right, that one that one that one that one that one that one that's it okay now we've got to put it back. Put it back through there. There's a lot more wire on this one than we did the other one. I think what we'll do is we'll put this on for tonight and then tomorrow I'll just unbolt it. Oh, there's a big gasket on the bottom. That's okay. It's closer. Yeah. That's what seals it. Can you go downstairs? She's gone on there. Now these were nylocks and I changed the nylocks out and put lock nuts on because uh, I didn't want the stainless bolts galling and welding up, you know, cold friction welding, because if they did these go straight into the bottom of the that's it straight into the bottom of the windlass you'd never get them off so we've got two cables there we put a loop in that cut them two off fiction <laughs> so that's the positive one come on it's hard to do this when the boat's rocking and rolling isn't it Let's 
one. On it goes two. That's it. Those two are back on. A little bit of curve on those is fine. Best thing to do now is to check it, make sure it's working. Then we can put the cover back in. 20 minutes later. Right, so it's still tied on, but I've got to pull this back. Oh, that's a bit different. <laughs> a bit better. I think he's happier. Uh, he's. That is better in there. Right, I can untie this now. Okay, so just before I finish this bit of filming, this is the uh, part number that you want, double six triple zero one zero seven, and this is for the thousand watt Lumar uh, Fish Pro, I think it's called, or Pro Fish. Um, this was a, from Cactus. They gave me the best price. Tomorrow I'm going to strip this down, have a look, see what's. Uh, wrong inside I've actually got another one of these the other one has got that gear wheel there damaged so we may be able to make another spare out of this one because I'm pretty sure what's happening is the brushes the brush springs aren't pushing the brushes in or um, the brushes are worn out um, but anyway that's it another job jobbed be three or four years before I have to replace that one and I guess when you're using your anchor every day every other day um, three motors in three years is not too bad I guess well this is I'm on the third motor so I've done two actually done two motors in two motors in nine years so that ain't bad is it really can't mind um, and I guess Lumar will tell you that that's a you know a service part anyway because you spoke you changed the brushes on them so there we go that's it another job job